We've gotten a couple questions regarding how the F1 Ultra compared to the F1 when laser marking 3D prints. We had been working with the F1 for quite some time and had gotten more familiar with its marking abilities on different filaments. But thus far, we had been using the Ultra mainly for things that the F1 could not do, such as deeper metal engraving, cutting, and things requiring its larger working area. We needed to find out if the Ultra could do the type of marking we had already been doing with the F1. So, some basic testing was done. The first thing to do was to find out if results consistently achieved with the F1 could be matched using the F1 Ultra. Since we had primarily been using the F1's IR laser for marking, we'll focus on the Ultra's IR for this exploration. We began with what seemed like it might be the obvious adjustment to make, which was to reduce the power output of the F1 Ultra to match that of the F1, keeping all other settings identical. The assumption was that it would give similar output results. In other words, since we were already familiar with how the F1's 2 watt IR laser affected a given filament, the first hypothesis was that setting the 20 watt F1 Ultra to output at 10% should theoretically produce the same effect. Well, we found out that wasn't the case. This is video of that test, by the way not a still photo. In fact, this resulted in the F1 Ultra, producing practically no effect on the test plate. Except for one square where we had a typo of an extra zero in the settings. This would lead us to conclude that power settings between the F1 and F1 Ultra do not have a linear relationship. So, for our next attempt, we started power tests at 50% of the F1 Ultra's output using the IR fiber laser. This time it produced a result, but did more melting rather than clean and crisp foaming of the surface. We ended up closing the hood for this one because of the smoke and fumes. For the next round, we broadened the variables a bit and increased the speed to reduce the duration, while also trying some parameters using a 75% power setting in addition to the 50%. This actually got us into the ballpark. In fact, it was remarkably close given that they were still pretty blind shots in the dark. Here is a comparison with the results from the F1. At this point, we decided to move forward with testing on different filaments. The broader setting spread may give us some additional insight when used on those filaments. Here is the test performed on matte light brown on the F1, and then on the Ultra. The contrast of the lightest areas seem to be much more pronounced coming from the F1. At this point, we weren't sure if further adjustments of the Ultra's setting could improve the contrast. Here we have PLA in Army Green. Here too, it appears that the F1 was able to reach brighter light areas than the Ultra did. And here, PLA Pro in Dark Gray. On this filament, the effects of the F1 and F1 Ultra were much more similar. If we compare a sample of the results, we can see that we can achieve clean score lines using the Ultra, with the power set at 50% and the speed set at 1000 mm per second. A power setting of 75% and the speed set at 1500 mm per second achieves similar results. But the power at 75% at the slower speed of 1000 mm per second does seem to begin to melt the material on some filaments. If we look at the results for the engraving settings we used, we can draw a few conclusions. The Ultra Set, at 50% and starting at 1000 mm per second, closely echoes the F1 at 100% starting at 100 mm per second. In other words, the Ultra Set at half power and 10 times the speed should get similar results to the F1. Another aspect that we noted was that nearly all the engraving test squares for the gray filament looked nearly identical. And the test squares on the other filament plates ranged from the lightest, peak contrast, then progressed to increasing degrees of melting and scorching from there. There didn't seem to be anything leading up to the peak, reflecting lower heat exposure. In addition, when we examined the score test setting results, there was very little variation in them as well. Because of these observations, we suspected that we may be able to achieve additional value range with a power setting beginning somewhere below 
At this point, another round of testing seemed to be in order. For this new test, power settings for the laser begin at a much lower percentage. Score setting range begins at 20%. The engraving speed test was also doubled to include both a series with a 30% power setting as well as a series using a 50% power setting. In this round, black, dark gray, silver, and gold, PLA was tested, as well as black, green, and blue, PETG. We ran the new test on all these filament plates to see if the adjustments resulted in the additional modulation of effect we had hoped for. Here are some highlights from the results. On the black PLA, we finally got a range and value for the scoring, but it looks like getting any real variation is going to require speeds of at least 3,000 millimeters per second. And the highest contrast, lightest engraving marking, happens well below the 50% power setting. The dark gray PLA was much more resistant to the IR laser than the black, with the cleanest score lines happening at the slowest settings of our range at full power. And peak contrast seems to be at about mid power when the speed is set at 2000 millimeters per second. It looks like the silver PLA mostly burned and darkened rather than foamed, but at least the results were mostly even and consistent. That's more than we can say for the gold PLA, which looks like what little effect there was consisted mainly of scorching and melting. On the black PET G, the results were very similar to the black PLA, except higher contrast seems to happen at lower power settings. The dark green PET G behaved similarly to the dark gray PLA, except that it seems that the melt point was a bit lower. We didn't actually get a clean reading for a score setting recommendation for the blue PET G, but we suspect that it may be around 300 millimeters per second at full power. And the setting for highest contrast engraving looks like it's around 1500 millimeters per second at half power. So the answer to the question of, can the Ultra do what the F1 can do, is, yeah, pretty much, at least in regard to what we've been doing involving marking 3D prints. It might need additional fine-tuning because of the additional power, but that additional power will give you more latitude with more materials. We were kind of hoping to end up with a formula for converting F1 settings to equivalent ultra settings, but the nonlinear relationships made that very difficult. Hopefully, the test file that resulted from this will at least be a good starting point for most. We know a lot of you may still be on the fence about whether or not the additional investment into the Ultra is right for you. Hopefully, this information will help in that decision. That F1 Ultra test file will be available on the site, as well as high-res images of the test plates. As always, please let us know your thoughts and let us know if you have any questions or concerns. We hope that you're finding this information valuable, and I know that we always forget to ask, but if you do, please like and subscribe. Thank you for your time with us. Till next time.